All right, we rolling? We are. Mm. Jeebus. Slappercast episode number 78. Wow. How are you doing, guys? Ah. Uh, Better than you. Good. Yeah. Good. <laughs> I was thinking about, actually, I was, every, every year, every, every time that you mention the episode number now, mm-hmm. I think about, because now it's getting closer to when I was actually alive. I wasn't alive in 1950. But now I think about what was happening in 1978. Oh, yeah. Episode 78. Yeah. Mm. I was in second grade and I went to Europe that summer. I know. And, and was it? And I came back. Was it intentional or were you just kidnapped? My, uh, my dad's older brother, Freeman, Marshall Hughes, was living in uh, just outside Amsterdam with his wife and their four kids, two uh, twin boys and then uh, two daughters. And we got the bright idea to go over there and uh, go to Europe for three weeks. Wow. We spent uh, over two weeks, two or three weeks. It was a long time. Nobody's going to check up on it. Say so five. Mom and dad and my older brother, Sean, and myself and my sister flew over out of Montreal and flew into uh, Amsterdam and spent a week or two, a week and a half, kind of hanging around, driving around all over the place. You were how old? 78. I was eight. Eight? Yeah. So you, meet, you meet some chicks? Oh, man. Can we talk about it? Oh, man. I don't know if I should talk about that. Yeah. <laughs> no, that's, that's still a sore subject with Leslie. She won't. She won't like that. Hey, let's talk about that in 79. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Anyway, so that's what happened in 1978. Wow. 78. Adventure that's, of a lifetime. Yeah, 78. So I was uh, six months old. <laughs> I, what? Let's just say six months plus. Okay, okay. I was talking about 2078. Oh, oh, oh yeah. Yeah. So yeah in yeah, the year 2078. <laughs> so, uh, so here we are again. And uh, Wait, what's the year? 2020. 2020. The year that never was and the year that never will end. Oh, it'll end. <laughs> it will end. Actually, that's, that's, a, that's, a good, that's a good stopping point right now. Good night. Thank you. Thank you for yeah. tuning in. <laughs> yeah, gotcha. Uh, yeah, so last time we were here, we had Jeff. What a great job Jeff did. That was did. fun. Yeah. That, that was, was really, really fun. fun. Which spurred us to um, bring in another guest today, um, David Letterman. Oh, damn we, it. Do we, David, we are you there? Do we ask him? We didn't ask him. We could, okay, yeah, next we, week, Dave Letterman. We could ask him. There's no point. Okay. No, no harm in asking. Okay. What's let's he going to say? No. Let's get, the, let's get the team on that. Okay. The team said yes. Oh. Go fuck yourself. Okay, that's not nice. So... Here we are again, seventy eight, and we're we're just we're just rolling along, and we're uh, it's a couple of things that are coming up. Uh, you have to mark your calendars for August thirteenth, a few days from now. We're going to be doing our first sessions live, live stream, and live live stream. True story. So true story. We're we're ironing out the details, and the people from sessions live. It's a new. It, it, it's not as exactly a new idea there but it's a new um you, you using bands is is kind of new for them they've been doing solo and duo now we're going to do a full electric show so this one is going to be a little different and it's going to be like i said these are the, fa- the founders of pandora uh, or one of the founders from pandora is putting this this uh new model together and we're going to to be one of the first bands to come in and do this so august 13th uh, 5 p.m. We're going to do a live stream with Sessions Live, and it should be very, very fun. We're going to put some new stuff on there for you as well. Some new songs never heard before. Never played before. Never played before. <laughs> and, uh, uh, but possibly slayed before. Slayed. Yes. Mama, we're all crazy now. Sautéed. I've actually been digging into some Slade lately. Really? I, I've got a, a double CD. Yeah. Uh, the little live CD that you you may you may borrow and ah, enjoy. I'd love to hear that. Yeah, yeah it's very just, uh, very cool. Cactus Records, uh, own, they're uh, they're closed Mondays, but they're open for limited hours. I think twelve to four, twelve to five. Go check them out. They've got their their LP collection is second to none, but they're they're uh, still doing records and tapes and all that and CDs. Uh, wonderful store. So uh, check out Cactus. But uh, back to the. The, the live stream. Back to Slade. So, Wait, Slade. Oh, okay. And, uh, we'll talk about that in a second, Chad. I know you're interested now. Run, run away. <laughs> we're doing the, uh, we're, we're very excited about this. 
uh, working with sessions and, you know, seeing where that takes us. Uh, before the cameras and tapes and all started rolling today, uh, Eric was talking about drive-in concerts. Yep. Uh, we're going to tour no matter who cancels on us. <laughs> uh, no matter what the the landscape is we're going to tour we're going to get in the van we're going to go somewhere so we have we have a couple couple of bre- pieces of breaking news coming on that front so we're going to look at into that and we're also going to so like i said eric said about the he was talking about the drive-in the, these these old drive-in movie theaters that are now talking about doing well, it's not even that. It's like people that have parking lots that are big enough that can space it out, that uh, they'll put up a, 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 a temporary stage and do their shows in their, in their, in their own parking lot. So the, the idea of drive-in meaning that you drive your car and you stand next to your car or whatever. Obviously, drive-in um, theaters are doing that kind of a thing. But even at some of the bigger stadiums around, they've had big, bigger shows and using, because there's plenty of parking at a lot of the, bigger kind of like football and, and, and baseball arenas. I mean, that aren't really being used. I mean, I guess baseball is, but football isn't. But if anyone out there knows of any kind of venue in their area that's doing like a drive-in concert or they've heard of one somewhere, let us know and we'll be happy to book it and come and see you and, and, and do it. You know, I know uh, for some of y'all up north, you know, in a few months the weather might not be great, but if you're down south, the weather's always, always fine. South of the Manson-Nixon line. So, uh, uh, yeah, so come on down and and and, and see us. How that look, Chad? Look good. You see it? Yeah, yeah. So anyway, so driving driving concert. Yeah, we'd like to try to do some of those since that seems to be uh, one way for us to get out there and, and and perform for y'all. It's gonna happen. It's gonna we're gonna make it happen. The other thing is, uh, want to thank Lori for uh, anybody that's anybody that knows us, anybody that's seen us before has met Lori. She has uh, been. Her, she's she's. Um, been number one in our in our in our ranks for a long long time in that she's just done so much wonderful stuff for the band she had these made boys and girls you see the right so uh she had them made and when all this crap started we were talking about having some masks made ah it'll be over and we didn't do it Lori said hell with you I'm going to do it. She did it. Mm-hmm. She had the mask made. So we're going to, uh, we're going to take online orders for, for these masks. Extremely comfortable. Um, it's embroidered, right? It's embroidered, yeah. It's, uh, nice. Uh, yeah, really comfortable. And uh, if, you're, if, if you're single, beware. You won't be if you get one of these. <laughs> and uh, if you're... Uh, I sit on my mask. What? <laughs> easy now, easy, easy, easy. So, yeah, it's there. There uh, again, Lori has. I, I th- think she, uh, her great uncle was Nostradamus or something, but she, she it's all rubbed off on her because she's she just saw it. And these are they're they're really comfortable. They're lightweight and they're they're. they're I, I just couldn't be happier. She she gave it to me as a gift, and so we're going to start this when you see this today, Tuesday. You'll uh, you'll be able to go to our website and find out how you can get one. And uh, we want to say, all of us want to say, Lori, thank you. You know, and 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 the, the, it's just just really really comfortable. I've been wearing the 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 mask with the with the filter on it, and I I like it, but it's 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 really it's really constricting. And you, you know, you got the marks all over your face when you're done. But this is just, this is just. It's like wearing nothing. Yes. So, yeah, very cool. So, nice. thank you, Lori. And it's it's not often that we we're selling crap on the on the on the thing. So, we'll, be dialing we'll, people. Be dialing. Yes. Be dialing. <laughs> Phone lines are open. <laughs> yeah. One eight hundred face masks. Yeah. The K is silent. That face. Yeah. It's a seven. Number. Yeah. Come on. Come on. Give up. <laughs> so here we go. <laughs> Back to you, Eric. Back to you, Chuck, in the studio. Chad, yes. in the studio. So we have some stories to catch up on, right? We do. There was a story that you teased, I think it was two or three episodes ago. About Applebee's. About, yeah, but getting oh cut Lord. off at Applebee's. Cut off at Applebee's. Yeah. Where's that album coming out? When is that <laughs> song going to be written? Cut off at Applebee's. Derailers. September? 
Driving all the way up to Taos, New Mexico. Taos, yes. We left Austin in the morning. I forget what time we left, but we all left Austin. Eight. I think it was earlier than that. I think yeah. it was... Eight minutes past six is what I meant. It was, I remember it was dark out, so it was yeah. pretty early. Um, I stayed at my sister's house right down the street, and we always met at the Randalls, the corner of Brody and, and Slaughter. Slaughter. And so we drove all day. We drove all day from Austin to... Well, you have to if you want um, to To uh, Santa Fe. We stopped in Santa Fe because Taos was just far enough, and it was kind of full up with all the festival goers. So we landed uh, in, in Santa Fe about just, just before midnight. And we checked in, and of course, me, being the alcoholic that I can be sometimes in the van, I wanted a drink. Like, we got to have a drink before. I can't just, like, go to bed after being in the van all day. You got to have a drink, calm down, decompress. And Basil had been driving. He's kind of like you. He gets in the driver's seat and just doesn't stop. And he drove us all the way up there. And I was like, I know Basil needs a drink. And so me and Bracken, and I got my phone and looked around to see what was open. And the closest bar was Applebee's which is a restaurant and a bar. It's a chain. You may have heard of it before. I never heard They're of it. They're around well, thank Applebee's. Thankfully, I've never heard it. It's, it's, a, weird, awful. it's a weird name. It's fun. It sounds, yeah. yeah. Uh, it's pretty terrible. But, um, but uh, that was the closest bar, we, and that was a minute away. We could have gone downtown, which is five minutes away, and there were other bars there that were open till two. But we want to drink now. Whatnot. But, yeah, we wanted to drink like, right the second. Yes. And, they clo- and Applebee's to closed. Relate. It was either we got there at 11 and they closed at midnight or we got there at midnight and they closed at one. I couldn't remember what to deal with, but there was like an hour to, to the, the hour of power, if you will. So uh, we, we checked into the, whatever hotel we were in and then we jumped back, me and Bracken and Basil jumped back in the van, hauled ass down Main Street. There was the Applebee's. We walked in. The bar was pretty full. Um, a lot of, uh, a lot of, there's a lot, of, a lot of biker type folks that were there. There's a lot of bikes outside. As you'd expect from an Applebee's. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> really. I mean, it was, they was, it was weird. I mean, they were like all these biker dudes. Like, they were like a biker gang. They yeah. weren't even a gang. They were just, I think, just friends. Yeah. They were there with their ladies and whatever. And so I, I elbowed up to the bar, and, and, and I said, I like a vodka and soda. And I ordered some beers. Uh, they wanted uh, Coors or whatever they were drinking. And I go, and can we get three shots of Jameson? And they said, okay. And they turned around and they came back and they put down the vodka soda. They put down the two beers. I'm like, and the shots. And they're like, yeah, we'll bring you the shots in a minute. Which is strange because normally when you go to a bar, any bar, you say, I'll have a beer and a shot or a drink and a shot. Boom, boom, right there. Here you go. That'll be $7 or whatever. And so I said, okay. So I grabbed the drinks and we sat at a table. And then two minutes later, three minutes later, here come the shots. Yay. So we, cheers, good driving, good travel, whatever. Did the shots. And I said, we're going to need another round in about five minutes. And of shots and Foresight. shots and drinks. And the guy, I was like, okay, young guy. I think his name was uh, Jamie or something like that. So right. you can't remember what time you left, but you know the bartender's name. Yeah. All right. Yeah. Carry on. Yeah. Well, there's, there's, a, whole, there's a whole reason why we know his name. <laughs> there's a whole point why we know his name. And so well, he's, he's, like, he's, like, he's like, and what were you having? Vodka soda. And then two cores for these guys, course drafts or whatever. Course for the ladies. Course for the ladies, yeah. And so he's like, okay. And I watch him and he walks back and he talks to the bartender for a minute. And I'm like, well, he's placing our order. And he comes back and about, I don't know, maybe another five minutes or so. I'd done my drink by then because it was just like, you know, get the first one down and then you can kind of relax. And then he comes back with the two beers and, and, and the vodka and soda. And he's like, um... So I can't give you guys the, uh, another round of shots. And we're like, oh, how come? Is it closing time? Is it last call? He's like, no, uh, because you've already had too much to drink. With one round. <laughs> With one round, you've already had too much to drink. Applebee's. And we're, I, and we're just like, <laughs> exactly. We're just like, we haven't had enough to drink yet. We, and he's like, well, because you ordered the two, you know, the drinks and the shots, and now you order another round of drinks, that's too much alcohol in the amount of time that you've been here. And we're like, what in the fuck Twilight Zone episode is this? They're planning ahead. And so we said, oh, okay. I go, well, what if we, can we order for last call, which is in another 20 minutes or so? He's like, yeah, but no shots. <laughs> so he's like, can I get you guys some food? Do you want Do you, some French fries or some nachos or something? Were they out of Jameson maybe? We're like, no. They're trying to break it to you slowly? No, Sorry. No, yeah. We're like, we don't want any food. We want, we want a drink. <laughs> Well, you know, we can't, we can't, 
oh, fine. And we just started laughing and talking about it. Basil posted a picture and we made a joke about getting cut off at Applebee's, blah, 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 blah. Last call comes, we get our last round of drinks. And we were actually the last guys to leave the bar because by then all the bikers had kind of cleared out so they can get home or whatever. And so we... we get we, off the road before we, you alcohol. Before, we, yeah, before the real drunk <laughs> start weaving, you know, yeah. playing two-line bingo. I mean, two-line pinball. <laughs> bing, 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 bing. Um, and so, uh, so we're walking out the door just kind of still laughing about the whole situation. Like, I can't believe we got cut off at Applebee's. What a great story this will be. And then Jamie comes to the door, opens the door and yells out, are you guys okay to drive? <laughs> <laughs> and we're like, yeah, we're fine. We're fine, Jamie. Thanks for the hospitality. Thanks, you know, be safe going home. Okay, you guys be real safe, okay? And we're like, yeah, sure. And we get, and he has, he's got a van just like you, the same kind of model, whatever. And we get in the van and we look and he's still standing at the doorway, like making sure that we back out safe and sound and whatever. And we all waved as we drove away and, and that was the end of that. Wow, I would have spun the tires. I would have. I would. I would have hit a pole. Like just bumped to, into something yeah. just to fuck, just him, to, fuck yeah. with him. Yeah. I thought yeah. you said he was going to follow you. Yeah. I, he might have. I thought you were going to say. He was I think he had to clean up though. But so we made a joke about, and obviously we 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 finally figured out probably why it was because Applebee's is a chain restaurant. Yes. And even though it's a bar, it still is a chain restaurant, and I'm sure they have certain rules that that adhere to liability. As far as too much alcohol. Yeah. Like they're afraid that we're going to drink and drive and kill somebody or ourselves and then sue them, which we totally would have. But all that, at the same time, we are professionals and we've been doing this for a long, long time. Um, in, in Jamie's defense, though, I want to say that, you know, you always look like you're at your limit. <laughs> <laughs> Including now? Yeah. yeah um, seriously. The, Sip. The, I will. Yeah, and, and I will be sure. I'll, yeah. <laughs> the epilogue to that is we posted that, hey, we're in Santa Fe at Applebee's, you know, as a joke. Yes. Just as like, hey, look at us. We're fucking off and whatever. And then we made the joke about, hey, we got, you know, cut off or whatever. And all these jackasses came on, not mine, on Basil's Facebook. It was like, I can't believe you went to Santa Fe and went to Applebee's. There's so many other good restaurants. And we're like, you are missing the yeah, entire yeah, 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 point yeah, yeah, yeah. of this whole thing. You And they kept on, like, as the next day went on, Basil was like, look at this shit. And it was just his feed was getting filled with people giving us restaurant recommendations. Yeah. To the point where Basil was like, yeah, we ate at the so-and-so place. We know where to go to eat. And it was just trying well, to explain. You, you, you can't, you're digging in quicksand. You can't. It's just. People you, are so you, you can't get out of it. Yeah. People are, well, think, and, but, and, and everybody has to have, present company included, uh, everybody has to have their say on, mm. your, on your behalf mm. for what you were experiencing. Of course. Whether you, you know, warranted, invited, anything or not. So, well, that's, that, that, and to me, and, and that's, that's a good point. And, and I think that the biggest, the biggest problem with social media is that everyone has a voice. And not everyone needs a voice, but it's given us a, a chance for all of us to speak up about anything and literally anything at any time. Yeah. You can find any topic, any subject on the, the Facebooks or the Instagrams or TikTok or Twitter or whatever the fuck you're on. And you, you are free to pull out your thumbs and start commenting on it and starting all kinds of just asinine, you know, arguments with people you don't even know. Yeah. Yeah. It, it, it's so comforting to be behind a keyboard and be an anonymous face, being able to shout at people for that don't agree with you. Right. That's that's joy yeah. to say. Yeah. I, again, yeah. I, I I I had coffee with our dear friend um, Doc Doherty uh, this morning. We were talking about that very thing, just people having their own opinion. But I, you know, I want to know. If you're if you're going to post this stuff and you're going to retaliate and you're going to retort and you're going to do your thing, just do, do just do a little bit of research first. <laughs> just look into something besides your black soul and before you throw this crap out there, because nobody seems to be taking any time to verify it. They just see it. It's in print. It's on the internet. Let's go. Gotta be true. So so I, I, I again I don't want to you know we we've already spent many COVID hours and many bullshit crappy topics and I I don't I don't want to do that. I just it's just you know in, in in closing that rabbit hole, just in burying that little 
fucking hole. Just, <laughs> just do, just do the tiniest bit of research, be it Snopes or be it, you know, a, a, a news source that you trust, but maybe back it up with another. That's, yeah. you know, just to, to, just to prolong your life because we will find well, you and kill you. To that point, <laughs> people that make it their, their uh, desire, their job or, or whatever, they, they feel like they have to comment on stuff like that and be super aggressive and maybe negative about stuff like that. I always wonder, like when I see, cause I'll go, I'll go through like a, a random thing and I'll see just people just losing their minds about stuff and being complete assholes. And I always wonder, I go to myself, I, I it's like I'm asking them a question. Like we're face to face, we're having coffee, pretend. And I turn to them and I say, is this the life that you imagined yourself <laughs> when you were a small child? Like, is this what you hope to become? You may have a job, you may have a family, you may do whatever, but is this your outlet? Is this the best that you can do with your talent, your ability, your intelligence, anything? Is this the best that you can do? And the answer is a resounding no. We can always do better. Yeah. Everybody can always do better. Yes. Yeah. So Speaking of doing better, yeah. I want to say that we had a wonderful night at Baby Gun Studio. Ooh. We did on Wednesday. That was fun. I wore my hair down. That was that was I. We had Stephen. Me and Chad King. wore our hair down. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> well, you know, Silverback over here. He well, he usually does that when a shirt comes. He off. does. Yeah. I don't want to. I don't want to. I don't want to. You know. Fair cop. Yes. I don't. <laughs> no, but uh, we. So we went in. We did a couple. We did a couple of new songs, mm. and uh, I just. I have to say, we're not playing close to as much as we should be just to keep our chops up. But Wednesday was one of those nights where I think we could have played anything. Just, it just, it, it, everything just felt right. And there was just a, just a great feel in the studio. And we've said it before, and I will not cease to, to blurt this crap out for, for eternity. But the, 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 organic is a terrible word. <laughs> just, it's just, it's just so overused, Less. but just that warm, homely you know organic feel that that bb gun studio has where you can just go in and just just like you're playing in your, your living room or you know just somewhere that's just yeah you, you just walk in and you know exactly where everything is you know exactly what you need good. to do and it, it sounds, sounds you know, good yeah so a, a band that shall not be mentioned uh because we're having a ceasefire on <clears throat> and uh the band I, I i i watched them working with a new producer after years this one band in particular and the band was the, the 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 hairs on my neck stood up because the band was so excited about this new producer and sound engineer that was able to just come in and boom sound right away everything right away and it was just there was an eye opening moment for me in that these guys were you know been been recording for hundreds of years you know the, the uh, just in the band alone the recording time, you know, you add all their years together and their, their recording time is hundreds of years and just untold millions of hours combined. And the, 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 their excitement for, that's what, that's what Wednesday was for us. Yeah. For, that's, that's how I felt. We went in there, we just, everybody at ease, no pressure and being able to just kind of spit those things and, you know, essentially stuff that we'd never heard before. That was that was that was that was very enjoyable. I liked how that second song, like once it came together, it felt really fun. It felt really good to play because mm -hmm. at the beginning I was like, "What's this form? And how's this going to work?" And I was like, <laughs> "And you didn't. You were kept on uh, bridge. Uh, yeah. I think it's the chorus." And we're, I mean, Chad was like, oh, "Well, I, I, I don't the, know it. You know, I don't yeah. know it." But it was just, it was just that was to me so fun. And then listening to it, listening back to it, having thinking to myself. They didn't know this song a minute ago. We didn't know this song mm. a minute ago, and and tend to have so to come in for, with nothing and leave with something is always exhilarating. But this, this, this that was one of those moments where, um, and 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 also, you know, luckily for us, we have, you know, we have a camera in there, so so there is a little a little footage of yeah, yeah. you know. The, but the, the, there was tension on my part because I hadn't I hadn't thought of the next step for this. Yeah, we're going to put it down on, on record, but I don't know what, what form it's going to take. Mm -hmm. So, so it, it reveals itself. The song yeah. reveals itself as you, 
as you, you know, <laughs> it's like clubbing a seal, <laughs> you know. I, no, I don't do that anymore. It's like, uh, <laughs> no, really, it's, it's, it's just like building. When you the, go to the club for seals. Yes. Yeah, the seal yes. club. Yes. Yeah. Uh, do the train seal. When you go into your garage and you just build something, you know, I, I, I've never done that either. But if you, if you have a clerks, bunch of parts. Come on, clerks, anybody? Clerks? No? And you, no. Sorry. Oh, come on. Sorry. We're, we're over 18. Uh, <laughs> I've seen it. I don't remember. Oh, my God. But you go into your garage and you build a, a uh, you know, something with just parts that you have lying around and it, and it turns out to be something. That must be amazing. I've never done that, but that's how it felt. Yeah. That was great. Yeah, that was great. That was a lot of fun. So, um, yeah. Uh, and also, so just re reminded me too, speaking of building something. So we're going to have Jeff Duncan. If anybody uh, watched last week's episode, you'll, you'll, you know, you see that we had Jeff on there. I would highly recommend you watch it. I would, he was just, just really entertaining. And J Jeff's been a dear friend of ours for a long time. And, uh, that was, that was a better one. But we also, I don't know if we told you, but uh -oh. you, cause you were talking at one point and Jeff was, Jeff couldn't hear you at oh, that good. one point. Cause there was a, at that moment. Well, that, yeah. Yeah. At that, at that if moment. If he was talking, he couldn't hear it. Cause it, he, he's only hearing my mic, but both of you are only coming through the, you know, from the room. Ah. Yeah. Cause, cause that, I didn't cause have there was that one right. moment that, cause we were talking about that later on. And uh, there was that one moment where you were because you were in the middle of a store, but he couldn't hear. So I just yeah. want to clear that up before you, you know, you send the send the goons over to Jeff's. Oh house. yeah, but that, that was expertly done because you you teed him off right after Jeff finished, and then you when you started off, you you phrase it as if you were just starting, you know, like the fresh. We're professionals, man. So, so my, my take episodes. on it is so it's almost like a like a professional interview. Like, so here's the question, John. Say the question in your answer. You know that type of thing. Right. So I was able to make this clean edit, so you have no idea that. Ah, that show your work. Yeah. Nice. Yeah. Yes. Yes. I had to. I had to because I, I haven't even listened again. to it yet, so I wouldn't even know. If you didn't I, even I didn't tell me anything. I, I, I. I'm not going to listen. I, to I it. wouldn't even know. I'm just telling them to listen to it. I'm not. Gonna My buddy Ben Woodbury, who is a, a fairly new Patreon yes. member, I believe. Former student living in Kansas City uh, area, texted me and said, "I really enjoyed that last episode. I laughed my ass off." Oh, good. good. So I don't recall it being particularly funny. I don't recall, but it uh, apparently somebody thought it was funny. Good. So, yeah, yeah. There were there were a lot of yeah. jokes flying. Yeah, maybe we can maybe we can fly some of that last week's episode into this one. Yeah, because <laughs> yeah, we never had. There you go. We got nothing. This is not. This See, is. We not got nothing. I got a. I got a. No. I got a baseball bat. I want to start smashing stuff. Yeah. Um. I want to go play. You want to go play some baseball? Play some ball? No, rock and roll. Rock and roll. I want to beat yeah. something up if I can't play. Yeah. You need to bring out that Paul Stanley guitar and break it at the end of the set like, like Paul does. No, let's just break Paul Stanley. Did break Paul Stanley? He'd be <laughs> yeah. easy to break. Yeah. Yeah. He's old. <laughs> anyway, that's pretty good. Thanks, yeah. Chad. Yeah. Chad's like, hmm, <laughs> I didn't know you had that in you. Yeah. We all have a little ball. The best Paul Stanley. Yeah. <laughs> he was made for loving you, baby. <laughs> Oh, no. Hemorrhoids in my temples. I just finished, uh, have you ever read it? You probably haven't read. Uh, no. Yeah. I read Gene Simmons' biography. What a piece of shit that was. Oh, really? Yeah. Yeah, it's, it's, it's did, rough. Did, did he charge you by the page? Uh, I kind of, did I buy that book? <laughs> no, you didn't. No, no somebody I don't think. Yeah, somebody gave Oh, shit. Me. Sorry. I had to stop by accident. This is what happens when I sneeze. Do you want to wait outside, yeah. Eric and Lyle? Okay. We'll, just, we'll just finish this off. <laughs> Sorry, you're talking about. You're talking, Was I? You're, you're talking about. You're talking about sure? this biography. Yeah. Yeah, it's a piece of shit. Gene Simmons yeah. from Kiss biography. Yeah. A piece of that. Can you imagine? That's a shock. Can you imagine how terrible yeah. it could be? That yeah. Um, although I just, but I just did finish Liberty DeVito's biography, and he was the drummer for Billy Joel. Yes. Now, not a huge Billy Joel fan. I mean, I, I like a lot of his older stuff. Like, I mean, like yeah. pre. Like the stranger was probably my cutoff point. Like after that, oh, I was wow. just like, eh. The rest of it's okay. It's yeah. not great. I would go up to nylon, nylon curtain. I heard that. Yeah, I haven't heard the whole record. I heard that was good. Yeah. Um, but you know, I, I was a casual fan after that. But his book is 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 interesting. It's good. Great drummer. Fucking awesome drummer. Great drummer. God dang. So talking about somebody that puts it all. Yeah. Into and 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 just solid kind of meat and potatoes kind of stuff. But just the way he plays is just remarkable. And, and and played Tama drums and kind of a big influence on me when I used to see him on like concert videos. Yeah, just the way he would play and just 
solid as a rock and and uh, and I actually interviewed him uh, in New York City um, probably in 2010 or 11. So I posted a picture. I don't know if you saw the picture. Yeah, I, I saw it. Yeah, I got to hang out in this hotel restaurant that wasn't even open, and we just talked for about an hour and a half about all the same shit that's in his book, actually. So he kind of got shafted by Billy later on, right? I would say he got shafted by the management because mm. Billy was at, a, I think Billy was at a point where he was drinking a whole lot and not really- At the Uptown Grill. Paying at, at, at the Uptown Grill. <laughs> <laughs> oh my God, just go to there. That's it, that's it. Hey man, leave a tender moment alone, okay? Come on. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Is it keeping the faith? I don't that's know. That's too much pressure. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> All right, come on. Don't be a stranger. Stop. Yeah. <laughs> it went, went in glass houses. It was like a scene from an Italian restaurant. Wow, <laughs> Captain Jack's on the money. You know it. <laughs> um, but uh, Uptown Grill, New Uptown idea. Grill. Let's write that down. <laughs> um, anyway, I think I think the management company kind of, kind of, kind of, because he was the only one left standing after. Like Liberty was the only guy left in the band after a, uh, one of those records. Like Billy fired everybody. Yeah. And kept Liberty around. Yeah, because well, obviously was, he's a fucking great drummer. So. One of those dudes committed suicide. And I remember reading somewhere. Um, it's like the bass, uh, the bass yeah. player or the guitar player. Uh, yeah, the bass player. Yeah. It, uh, anyway, your so your your interview. I know you you've 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 rubbed shoulders with quite a few, and uh, I have to say too, I have to compliment you on your delivery in in uh, in this form. Anyway, I mean it's, it's always very concise and very well spoken and blah. blah. Well, so I so I know that you have a I know that you have a talent for that. If you if you could interview anybody right now, anybody in the world, living and dead right now, who would you who would you interview? Patrick Devlin. Well, my Chad, favorite Chad color. Richard Smalley? Let's make yes. that happen right now. <laughs> so. Dreams do come true. Where, show me on the doll where he touched you. Um, mm. <laughs> not, not, that kind, not that kind of an interview. <laughs> That's a good question. Uh, anybody living or dead? Probably somebody musical. Probably yeah. somebody that I want to talk music, music with. Character or just in? Uh, probably in. Gene Krupa because he's a big, big hero of mine. Yeah. Um, any non-musician? I don't know. Gene Simmons? Gene fucking Simmons. <laughs> the actress. Oh, Gene yes. Simmons, yeah, 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 yeah. Who was Shelley super cousin. hot in, uh, in, uh, in uh, Elmer Gantry. Elmer, G Elmer Gantry, anybody? Elmer Gantry? Oh, my God. Stop. Look, we I lost interest. We have after to Porky's. educate you guys about this more. Yeah, we, we, we I'll need to. I'll tell you to, about that later. We need, mo we need movie uh, ideas. Elmer Gantry was, uh, it's Burt Lancaster, Gene Simmons, and it's basically she's a revivalist. Back in the twenties or thirties, maybe, and and he comes in and he is the biggest huckster, but people believe him, and it kind of like parallels what's happening with Joel Osteen and all those kind of guys. Like they're just hucksters; they're just hawking this stuff. But his he's so charismatic in this thing that you can, it's it's it's. it's I want to see that. It's rem it's fucking really good. It's really really good. Nineteen fifties, I think, when it came out. Yeah, but it basically just. It really digs into like all that church revival tent stuff that was going on back and how how gullible people were and are to this day about stuff. Anyway, that's that's Elmer Gandry. But um, I don't know if I could interview anybody. Probably Gene would be a good top of the list. Yeah, a historical figure. I, know, I always thought that uh, you know, I don't know. That's a hard question. Good yeah. question though. Send in your requests. Yeah. Not musician or non-musician? Anybody. Doesn't matter. Anybody, living or dead. The first person that came to mind was David Bowie, just because he's one of those guys that's just so, the, the extent of his knowledge is so vast. You know, he's also just really intellectually curious about a lot of, a lot of different things. Yeah, that was a show. That was a front. Next. The one. <laughs> Shocker. I know, and this, this is t completely personal, but I would, I would love to interview my dad. Of course, I can't because he's dead. But... Well, don't blame yourself. He, he was also a really fantastic conversationalist. And I know that had he been around when I started figuring out how to do this, I would have loved to have gotten gotten him on. He, but do, you he have him on tape, though. You have yeah, conversations not, and... there's uh, Yeah, well, we have... Most of the tapes I have are from when I was like 12 or 13. And that's we're what, just yeah. goofing around. That, and that's, that's good, that's though. That's precious. Yeah. But I, I wish there were so many great conversations that we had that I wish I'd recorded. You know, Because yeah. he was always game to just well, dive into any subject. Your memory is sh shockingly clear for... Uh, for an alcoholic, <laughs> no, for, no, really, it's it's for you, someone your age. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> nicely done. Um, you see, the stories that you've told have been not only intriguing, but they've been 
it, 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 it's, it's enlightening too. It kind of, it, it shows where you got your intrigue and your curiosity and your oh yeah yeah research yeah. you know i mean it's just really it's it, it's it's not a it's it, it's not a shock when you get to hear the, the past like that but those those cassette um cassette tapes mm-hmm. i would i would transfer them i would put them yeah, on try to save them oh so, they are yeah yeah the two the two ones i know that exist i have i don't know there's other not conversations with with me but there, um, there's friends of mine I know who, who also, you know, sometimes would furtively record conversations with. Yeah. Them. <laughs> so there's but, stuff but, out there. But, but I have another yeah. question, right? Just to follow up can, to. So okay. on, on your what? Can I just jump in real quick? Please. Sir. So, so my plan is when my mom and dad get back from Vermont is to interview, do an oral history interview oh, cool. with both of them. Cool. And the selling point that I used when I would when I reach out to people that um, I wanted to interview, and they would say, well, what, what's the main purpose of this? Well, obviously the purpose of this is educational. The people that are interested in you want to hear about you, but it's also historical because you want to think about, now I don't think, uh, maybe, maybe you will father 17 kids in your old age like they used to do back in the day, but if anybody in your family is having any nieces or nephews or stuff like that, you know, now's a good time to interview your mom. Yeah. You yeah. have that time because yeah. mm-hmm. at some point, you know, we're all going to be, we're all going to pass away at some point. Oh yeah. You're absolutely, <laughs> and, and you're absolutely right. just the way it goes. And having that legacy mm-hmm. of that, not only, cause you can look at pictures in a, in a, in a, in a photo album all you want to, but being able to see that person speak and hear that voice, that's the legacy we want to create yeah. for our older folks. Yeah, absolutely. You know, so now, the, the whole reason I, I say that is because, um, my dad and his siblings did do that with their dad uh, when he turned on his 80th birthday. They were all on a cruise mm-hmm. together. This is back in 1980 or 70, 82, 83, something like that. Um, 70, 82. Dude, there's a memory right there. Um, it never stops. And they, they put it, they sat, went to a suite and they, they sat down, you know, and sat around this tape recorder and it's like two cassettes of this long conversation they yeah. had. Yeah. And it's great. He tells the whole, his whole life story. And I uh, always intended to do that with dad, you know, but things turned bad a lot faster. Sure. Oh, of course. <laughs> I expect, you well, you don't know. You, you, you yeah. just don't know. Yeah. And that, you know, again, this encapsulates everything we're talking about in today's, just even this episode. Sure. You don't know what's coming. And you, yes, you can see into the future and you can do plan all you want, but you don't know what's coming. So do it now. Don't wait till. Yeah. You know. So my next question on that same you kind of answered half of it. Thanks a lot. Oh. Um, Sorry. Yeah. The <laughs> so so you're so you're interviewing somebody right now. You start thinking about this. I'm asking Eric first because if you're if you're going to interview somebody right now, I, I, again, this is looking at last week's episode with Jeff. Hmm. If you're going to interview somebody and you want to you want to make it interesting for that person as well. That's, that's, that's always my, you know, we didn't want to get Jeff on here and just say, Jeff, you're really good. You like me. You, you want to drag out of him what, you, you know, what his, what, what lights him up. What, yeah. So, so when you're going to interview somebody and you're going to leave a mark, essentially, you're going to, you know, you, you, you want, you don't want them walking away, forgetting about it, you know, like to have something to, to, to maybe take that put their mind in motion for, for later on. What would you, so where would you go first to, to steer away from the mundane, boring, usual, just the shit that they get every single day? Yeah. So that's a good, that's a really good question because it's like when I was doing all these interviews, I would preface it. I wouldn't even, I would tell them like, as I'm setting up or as they're sitting down, I go, I go Hey, look, I go, we're going to talk more about your life, your history, I go, I don't, you know, modern drummer or drum magazine, they'll ask you all the questions about your latest album or what gear you play. I go, I might ask you some random question about a recording at some point. I go, but if it comes up in conversation, especially if it's somebody like, you know, I interviewed um, Indugu Chancellor, who's a drummer. And if you don't know him, he's the one that played on most of uh, Michael Jackson's um, Thriller record, which of course is one of the biggest records of all time. And that uh, drum part for Beat It, not Beat It, um, uh, Billie Jean, you know, don't, don't, don't. you hear that. And even if you don't like Michael Jackson, 
you're going to, something inside you is going to move because that beat is the perfect sound. It's the perfect tempo and it just sounds cool, you know, and he, that's him, you know, and of course he's done a million other things in his lifetime. And so that's the one thing that I, you know, eventually we came to that, like, how is it like to record Thriller? You know, and he was like, oh my God. And he went off on, and I thought about what a great experience that was. But also, you know, you kind of have a set questions like, where were you born? Uh, did your family have music in the household? How did you get started? All those kind of maybe mundane questions, maybe boring questions or whatever. But then as they talk, they understand, they start to understand Nine times out of 10, they start to understand that this is a different kind of interview. Yes. Someone really cares. And I really do care about everybody that I've talked to because they've, they've either influenced me or, um, you know, they've influenced thousands of other people. And I want to know, you know, how they tick and what they do. And so as they talk, they become more relaxed and they start to open up about other random stuff. And then you can always say, what was that like? Or how did that make you feel? And when you start asking those kind of questions, then the floodgates open. Yeah. It's like they, they, they want to tell you everything about just about anything. And because it puts them at ease, you know, and I'm, and I am generally, generally interested. I'm not trying to get a scoop or something. That's not who I am. That's not what my purpose is. My That's... purpose is to get as much information from them so they can educate the rest of us about what their life was like, if they struggled, what, what their career is like, how successful, how success, you know, um, impacted them or their family you know just all these interesting things that i think are more important than what size sticks do you use huh? and what kind of heads you use on that recording who gives a shit i don't yeah. care about that yeah it's it's and, it's, and that's it's, the stuff that that that's the stuff that not only makes you want to get up and do something else right you know completely loses focus on it but it's also the the it, 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 it it's the colder side it, it's the it's the it's the side that the, the the their brain doesn't really go to because they're they're already, they've already, you know, pimped their, their product or they've sold their product or, you know, right now it's them. Right now it's, yeah. it's, we're digging into, to, to, to their abilities and their impact that they had on the world. So do, do, do you have any, any ideas of what you would ask somebody like a David Bowie just to be completely Chad-like and un, um, like a paparazzi-like or, you know. Well, okay. yeah. And, 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 and think about, you know, think about guys like David Bowie, I mean, and, or even like Ringo and Paul, like how many times have they been asked questions about being in the Beatles? How many times has David been asked questions about, Hey, when you were doing Ziggy, you know, Sorry, like that, I mean, let's find something else. You know, why'd you go to art school? What made you want to go to art school? You know, that kind of, stuff. Yeah. I'd be more interested in that kind of stuff. Yeah. 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 I would, I wouldn't want to know more about what inspired him, you know, mm. um, and not just music, just just other, any kind of stuff that he was that that he was that he was digging into. There's there's a great story that I wish I could remember this guy's name. When I was living in New York, there was a, a really brilliant um, artist who did uh, concept art for movies. He actually had worked on some of the Batman films and things like that. But we went over to his house one night for dinner, and he told us this great story. Uh, he was at an art museum. One of the, one of the art museums in, in New York. I can't remember which one it was. They got a few, huh? There's a few. They got there's a few of them, yeah. <laughs> and uh, he was looking at a painting and with his friend and commenting on it. And uh, it was some contemporary artist. Um, again, I don't remember who it was. But all of a sudden, he hears this this English voice perk it out behind him. It's like, oh, I think you're right. You know, some, some kind of just jumping into the conversation. He turns around. <laughs> it's David Bowie, <laughs> and. Uh, and he, David introduces himself to him, uh, introduces himself as David Jones. Hi, I'm David Jones. <laughs> and they had this great conversation about this artist. And, and David was just and, and said something like he doesn't meet many people who even are familiar with the guy's work, whoever it was they were looking Interesting. at. And that's the kind of conversation I'd like to have with him. It's like, you know, something about something he's going to do rather, rather than asking him questions about, Hey, how did you come up with this, you know, yeah. this album? How is it like writing this song or, you know, all the typical questions. That you how do you write your lyrics? Fuck that. Uh, right, yes. right. Okay. Yeah. Well, if no, you're, no if, if you're going to interview somebody like, and, and, and uh, ladies and gentlemen, uh, the reason why we're at, or the reason why I came up with the, these questions is because we're going to be having some, some guests come on the show. We're going to be talking to some, some, uh, some of our favorite people. And I, I just want, I just want you to know that a we're not going to do the regular 
the regular rat race, you know, A to B to C to, you know, it's, it's going to be, it's going to be much like you hear when you, when you tune in and thank you for doing so. When you, <laughs> when you tune in, you get to hear us jabber about this stuff and slop on about whatever topic is going on. But we will be using a different a technique, if you will. I'm, I'm just, just a little, little, little unveiling of kind of how we're going to do it because it's not going to, I just, nothing is more boring than being able to predict the next yeah. lyric or movie scene or, you know, just, you just don't watch that. You just don't right. listen to that. You just don't want to. So was, I, my, and again, I've been thinking a lot about this too, in, 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 in trying to engage somebody and trying to get, I try, try to get, get the story like the Appleby story, <laughs> just, you know, drag it out, you know, or the, the, the road trip with your dad, stuff like that. Uh, f little backstory, you know, when, when we used to do these monstrous drives from coast to coast or from north to south or from wherever, we would keep each other awake by telling these stories and, and uh, learning about, you know, because I mean, this has been 16 years of nonstop drivel and stories and anecdotes and jokes and stuff. So my my reasoning again is the I, I like to get the storyteller opened up and and spewing and there's there's so many what you you've seen that you've seen the interviews on TV where it be Johnny Rotten or um or you know so some 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 news anchor that thinks he's a celebrity you know and you see them go off on these stories and they they're they're brilliant or they're dead. You know, like Letterman was always, t t t is, will always be the number one TV personality to me, just in that if you didn't bring everything to his table, you're, you're done. Mm. You know, you have to have everything. You have to be firing on every cylinder to be able to, you know, I've never seen, uh, I've never seen any of these other late night talk shows be able to drag out or to have that respect from these people coming into. So you, you <laughs> All that to say, <laughs> I just want to, you know, I want to be able to get this story time going and these, these things that you've never really thought about when you think of this type of person and stuff like that. It, and, and, and it's been, it's been so, it, it, there's just been so many stories of our, you know, just, just in our uh, van rides, you know, these plane rides, whatever it is, it's been so many things that have come out. You just, you, 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 that's, that's rabbit hole central. I mean, you oh, just, yeah. because, you know, and once a musician is able to give you a little background or a little insight into, you know, a couple of the stories, a couple of the tour horror stories or whatever, they alight, they, they, they just set alight all these other memories that you've had in the, in, you know, in, in the exact same situation or in a situation that was started the same, but they went in two different directions. <laughs> kind of amazing. Yeah. But I, I, I'm just, I'm just really excited about it because we were able to, uh, not, you know, thanks to the technology, be able to drag Jeff in from, from outer space and, you know, and, and, and bring him to you. So now we're going to, we, we're just going to get a couple of those, uh, lined up and we're going to, and, and we, we just, you know, our promise is that we're not going to be talking about the you know the political landscape or the favorite colors or the ice cream flavors or what kind of strings do you use Jeez. <laughs> right Jeez, strings. speaking of that patrick uh -oh. if you could interview anyone living or dead who would it be uh musical probably freddie mercury interesting um non-musical probably anybody from motley Crue or um <laughs> No, I, 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 uh, I'd like to JFK or, uh, or Gandhi I like those diet tips. Um, diet tips from Gandhi. Yeah. Don't eat. Oh, don't eat. That's a, no, <laughs> no, 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 yeah. Ever. Hair tips, hair. Yeah. Frosting tips. Yeah. No, um, yeah, so, some, something like that. Something, somebody that's been, you know, but again, it wouldn't be, it wouldn't be, it would just be, be questions like childhood memories and mm -hmm. uh heroes of theirs and different just stuff that's not covered in the 
history books or the sure. So I, I, I Freddie, Freddie was it is fascinating to me. His music's all right, and he's he's, um, he's, a, he's a pretty good singer. Yeah, decent, decent. Yeah. A few tips for you, Freddie. Yeah. Um, but his uh, his. You, 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 a lot like Bowie, you can just kind of flick through a bunch of magazines and you can see how David Bowie lived and, and, and his phases and the fads and whatever he went through and his hair designs and his, I mean, same with Freddie, you know, we did those early days and those silver costumes and those goofy, you know, then this eighties and those horrible t-shirts and those, but it was always the same person, no matter how flamboyant or how normal or how, just the same person the whole time. So you see, so, 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 you know, in there, there's a, there's a street, there, there's, there's just, there, there's areas that you just want to go and say, what, what happened here sure. right before art school, right when you left here and you moved to England or you left you, you, and the, you, you, uh, you, you want to know the stories of that first, I want to know the first queen, uh, Air, airplane ride, you know, you know, where they had their own plane. That that's what I want to know. I want to know, you know, if you've got, been to Graceland, and you, you got to go on the Lisa Marie. Uh, it, back in the day, you used to have to go through on a tour. Well, I've been a, quite a few times because uh, Elvis requested me. That's another story. <laughs> um, but then, uh, as years went on, and uh, I guess the tourism must, must be dwindling, or. Um, you get to go, you just put a, put a, put a Walkman on, you just get to walk through at your own pace. Well, I was on the Lisa Marie alone. And that's not my first time with her. Yeah. Um, but being on, and being in there, 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 there's a, there's a feeling without getting too hippie about it, but there, there's a, I was overcome with this sense of, I mean, this, cause it, it, it's not a replica. This, that's the real thing. And there's the big, heavy, clear plastic over the, you know, like at your grandmother's house. Cause mm-hmm. she's just scored. I've been there. Um, I've been on it. Yeah. 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 And it's, it's, it's tremendous. It's, so that's what I want to know. I want to, I want to get, so, I want to get into the head and I want to get out of the mouth the first time that that, that they took off as that band. Mm-hmm. Did you, was it, was then you made it? Was that the, but you also want to know what the, what the, what that atmosphere was between those four guys playing in art school as a, you know, as this weird entity, as this strange, you know, the band that has never been heard before. Right. It's just got to gotta be, that's, you know, that's the kind of stuff that, yeah. that I want to. We can make it happen. Yeah. Yeah. Ouija All right. Board. So speaking of guests. Yes. Realistically. Yes. Who would be your favorite guest to have on this show? Realistically. 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 Besides John Nania. <laughs> Besides John Nania. Besides John Nania. Okay, you should have said that. Yeah. Um, but he will be on the show. He says he won't. But We'll make it happen. Yeah, we'll make it happen. Oh, yeah. We'll guilt him into it. So. That's a. That's a. Tough one. Yeah. What about somebody like David Letterman or. David, I mean, David Adderley would be my favorite in any, in any form, you know, just. But realistically, would you think he'd come on this show? No. I'm asking realistic. Yeah. A realistic guest. Yeah. Now, maybe if we all grew our beards, <laughs> he'd come on. You think it was easy, you think it was easy top? He'd like, oh, I'd love to be talking with easy top. Yeah. yeah. That's, I, I th- that's why he grew it. Mm-hmm. Well, right now, realistically, you know, we could blackmail J- Jeff into coming back on. That, that's as, that's as, that's as, that's as more. more. No repeat guests. <laughs> no. Oh, God. It's a hard one, right? Yeah, it is. It is. Because, you know, we're, we're, there's, there's three of us sitting in a room right now. And three of us right now are not good at selling anything. Uh, and I say that because... Uh, great drummer, incredible teacher, patient, all this stuff. And he won't sell himself. He won't, he won't say, you know, 
he's, he, you know, people should be lining up to take drum lessons from this guy. This guy over here, not only great bass player and singer, but great at websites and all that stuff. Is he out pounding the pen? No. But I mean, he's got, he's got people and he's working. So three of us, you know, and it took me, you know, a year to, you know, <laughs> six months to, 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 hey, we got masks. Right. So three of us in here were terrible at selling stuff. So right now, nobody in their right mind, you know, past the celebrity of a toothbrush is going to is going to come on. Right. But realistically, down the road, we get a couple of guests on here. I'm talking realistically, no problem at all. Steve Harris, Iron Baby. I was going to say the same exact thing. Because I bet you a dollar that we could get Nico on. I could get Nico to come on the show. If Nico does it, then he'd Look have such a, he had he'd, it ready. <laughs> he'd have such a, I have no money. Uh, uh, if Nico did it, I bet you could talk Steve into doing it. Yeah. That would and, be awesome. And, and this all was born because of Nico. This, not, not born, but this continued to grow, this, this evil wicked plan began to grow and uh, just fester in, 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 in my head because Nico, I think, is one of the best storytellers. We, you, you have to have subtitles. We have to have subtitles. For Nico? Yeah. Maybe. Yes. No, the stories are, look up on YouTube. Anybody is interested at all, just, just, just well, you, you kind of have to know a little bit about the band, but if if you if you listen to the story where Nico is where Iron Maiden are playing a show and it's outdoors and it's uh, Steve's uh, shoes melted on stage it was so hot his boots melted on the stage and his fingers were burning touching the strings it was that hot there was a pool backstage at this place and on one of the one of the interludes in in the song one of the the breakdown, they, 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 they go to tape and there's a, this whole, you know, this, this big theatrical piece. Nico decides to go jump in the pool. And that's all I'm going to say. Because <laughs> you got to understand, you, you, like I say, you have to know a little bit about the band and then that maybe the song and then to hear him tell the story is just, I spat coffee in nose, ears. I wasn't even drinking coffee. <laughs> that's how good it was. But it was just that brilliant. But his delivery on that story and, 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 I, and, and, and drummers have this gift of being able to talk their drum part out, meaning rhythmically sound out what they're playing on their drums. And it doesn't matter if it's a double kick and it's a death metal song and it's 386 beats per minute. Mm. They can tell you in their, you know, beat, beatboxing, right. spitting, thumping, every, every, with every piece of... Uh, equipment they have in their head to make sounds they're able to nobody is better than nickel at making that telling you how that song goes and playing that riff playing that role playing that piece through his mouth it and often dropped into to to a story and to a to a situation and they said brilliant storyteller well he's on my list of people that i'd like to interview anyway so this would well make you've him, met him though right just, you met him i at, met him just briefly i mean yeah. we, we just briefly talked at a NAM show a couple of years ago. And for those that don't know NAM? National Association of Music Merchandisers. It's a big trade show. The biggest. They're, it's the biggest. Well, it's, it's the biggest one in America. Yeah. Music Messe in Germany, I think, is the biggest. The biggest one. Which is, is the same exact thing, but it's everybody. I yeah. mean, it's literally everybody that makes anything to do with music. Is it a summertime thing? Music Messe is in, or was, usually, normally, I think it's in October. Oh. Yeah. So we'll do Oktoberfest and that. Yeah, we could. That's good. Okay. Yeah. Next year, 2021. 21. And Australia next year. It's I mean, we, we, could, we could totally play the NAM show in California. Yeah. But they don't pay you, though. They no. Don't, they don't pay you. It's, and it's no, kinda, L- Lori. And, and you're stuck in like a hotel lobby at like two in the afternoon yeah. when no one gives a fuck. Yeah. Well, we do. Well, I do. Okay. Yeah. I would care about us if we were there. Okay. Yeah. Well, Lori, as, as uh, Lori has. Uh, oh, yeah. Yeah. She's, she's asked us to play before, and actually, uh, I think we had to turn it down once before because we were playing. But, uh, well, we can make it part of the... And NAM is usually in January. Yes. What's the website, Steve's website? 
Lawrence? SG, SGWestern.com. SGWestern.com. That's a great website. Have you seen it? I have. I have not. You have not seen Oh, you got to check I it out. I would go on it right now, but my phone is being used to, oh. to film me for this hey. podcast. So, uh, SG Western, what's, is, does that have any? Do you have any personal ties to that, Chad? A few. Yeah. And <laughs> fucking hell. He's the anti nickel. I, I, I built it. <laughs> Gotta pull it out of him. Uh, that, I, you I, built I, it. You I, done I, built I, it. I, yeah. And, and in collaboration with Lori, uh, that, that site was put together for the company that she works for, which is a, uh, I don't know what you call them, audiovisual uh, equipment uh, seller, dealer. Dealer. Yeah. And, and, you know, and Steve, who we, who we <laughs> so Lori's boss, Lori. Uh, Lori's mm-hmm. boss, Steve, when we were playing in Vegas last, he came out to our, uh, the house that we were staying in, uh, for the week. And he gave us a demo of the, remember the, or oh, you weren't there for that, were you? Yeah, I was there. You're there yeah. The, oh, that's right. Was, yeah. Um, the, the Python, the, mm-hmm. the speaker, it's, it, it's, it looks like a big, big, big black snake Ooh. and it's, it's a speaker. Mm. It's a Wi-Fi speaker. And you can bend it, roll it, twirl it. I mean, this. Weird. And it sounds, the, the sound is just, it's obscene. It's so good. Was it that same system that had the sub that was basically this little thing attached to the wall? Yeah. It turned the whole wall into a sub. Holy shit. Yeah. yeah. It, was, it was insane. And so this, the, you know, and he came over to, he came over to the place in his van and he gave us this demo and we're just. Just jaw dropped. First thing I thought about was the pirates, you know, the, you know, our drunken monkey privateers and our uh, Mardi Gras down in Galveston and all that stuff. I thought of these speakers being on the side of the pirate ship because you, you don't know it's a speaker, but the sound coming out of it was just incredible. Hmm. So, so we've, we've known Steve through Lori for years and Chad built the website and I would just, just uh, for your own enjoyment, just go check out Chad's work on uh, sgwestern.com because it's, it's a, uh, you know, I, as you could tell, because I know you've all been to blackguards.com and you've seen the, the wonderful work he's done there. But this is a, you know, yeah, I'm, I'm, that, that's been on my to do list to completely re- overhaul our, our website. Now, that's the next thing I want to do right now. I'm overhauling my apartment. That's why I keep fighting off sneezes because I'm my head is full of dust. <laughs> Everything I was doing yesterday, the little white powder kind of dust, uh-huh. you know, yeah, it goes yeah, on yeah, over yeah, there. Yeah. yeah so, so, the, so, like I said, there's a lot. Of, going on as always and everybody's got their everybody's got their stories and their you know stuff that's happening right now this is uh this can be your time to make everything happen i know that we're we're uh, we have to we have to draw a line in the sand and start mixing this C- this record down this cd because it's it's time we have the songs now and we have to so we're going to go in. We're going to put a little bit of icing on this, uh, this uh, well, we'll call it three quarters of a cake that's cooked. We're going to make this record, um, and, and now we're going to start the mixing process. And uh, I'm going to call our, our friend, Mr. Longwood, see about getting the, uh, see about having it mastered. And um, so a lot of stuff going on, as usual. And this is going to be a big, 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 Touring season. Once, <laughs> <laughs> once we figure out where the well, fuck we're we, going. Well, you know, we get our friends to point us in the direction of some drive-in concerts, maybe. Yes. Uh, that, would be, that would be fun. Um, that would help, definitely. Yes. That's one way I think the concerts are going to be going going forward is this yeah. kind of outdoor, outdoor-y kind of venue kind of place. So if anyone yeah. knows, please share it with us. Yes, that's a, that's excellent point. And also, we're, we're going to kick up the, the house concert idea as well for people that 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 can that you that have the space to to do something outdoors and like a backyard or backyards and stuff like that yeah. so we're going to do that again Lori, um she is she is uh, you know we we have an open invitation to her place which is the pecan pub the old pecan pub uh down at her back garden and uh we're also looking into some venues that maybe are, are still closed, but might want to do a door charge and food and distance, you know, so we, we, we're, we're, we're at the end of our rope folks. We're about to, 
to put a flatbed on the back of the van and start driving around town playing live. But it, it's going to happen. And then, uh, and also, uh, we, we need to get Jason Yu on this, on this program as Me well. Me too, yeah. So, so we can... We It'd be can, fun to talk to. Yeah. Very fun to talk to. And also highly, highly artistic and brilliant mind when it comes to these videos. And so, so the videos in, in the works too. So we, you know, we got a lot of stuff, but I, I, I can't on Eric's point, if you know of any of these drive through places, let us know. The van is getting warmed up and we're going to, uh, we're going to come see you. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yeah. I, is that I think that's it. I think so. <laughs> okay. I think so. Thank you for watching. And uh, if you're, if you're in the market for some face masks, we're going to have the information. Um, Where? Blaggards.com. 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 Yeah. yeah. Or on our Facebook. We'll put it on Facebook. We'll mm -hmm. put it on the, the Instacrap and we'll put it on the, 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 the Twitter and the, the. We're not on TikTok, are we? I am. You are not. God, don't. don't. I, did, I, did don't. Did create, I created an account for us on TikTok, but I don't know Ugh. what to do with it. Don't yeah. do it. Yeah. We're too old. It's because his, his brother told me to. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> his brother. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Yeah. All right. All so, right. Yeah. Right. Thanks for listening. And uh, I, I think we should. Oh, you have a good time here. I know you're going to. Uh, you and Leslie are going to have a nice weekend off. I believe so. so. Have a good time. Cool. And you get yes, better. I, yes, I'll be. I just need to take a walk or something. In. Yeah. <laughs> All right. But yeah, okay. don't go changing. See you guys.